Hi everybody, welcome back to my challenge. I was going to say welcome back to my challenge. <laughs> welcome back to my channel. Today we will be talking about the 100 head challenge. First of all, one very important thing is to credit the author of this challenge. Um, this challenge was started by Ahmed Aldori. I'll put his Pinterest board in description so you can see the the board he made for the challenge. It's a board containing a hundred pictures. So if you're interested, you can click on this link and see the references he chose for this challenge. As you may know, I am finally done with this challenge, which means that I can now show all of my drawings to you. And I'm very excited about that. My drawings take place in two sketchbooks. The first one I already made a tour of, but I skipped very quickly on the 100 head challenge drawings. So we will go through them. Um, we will take our time and I will discuss every page. And I also started this sketchbook too when I finished that one. So we will proceed in order starting with this sketchbook and then we will take a look at this one. When did I start this challenge? I forgot, in fact. I'm going to go check in my Instagram stories to see if I can find a trace of when I posted the first story of me doing the 100 head challenge. So here, 34 weeks ago, I posted a story of this page when I was doing it. So according to my calculations, this would put us to the beginning of January. So it took me about six months to finish up the challenge. And usually, if you know how the challenge works, you're supposed to draw all of these in 10 days. So 100 portraits in 10 days. Obviously, I didn't follow that rule. It took me a lot longer than that. But I really wanted to use this challenge as a way of trying out new mediums trying out new techniques, not just drawing portraits, but also discovering what I like in making art. So these were my first portraits that I did for this challenge. I started with this one. Before doing these, I was drawing a couple of portraits in this style. So I kind of continued with this style first here with just black and white and with some hatching, something very graphic. So that's what we started with. I incorporated more pencil drawings in the this page. So we have four portraits. I remember that I like this one, but it really didn't look like the reference image. Um, all of these look good like this, but compared to the reference image, I could see that I had a lot of work to do on proportion specifically. But I really like this one too. I like how... I was able to um, do the shading with the pencil, so that was very fun. Then I did this page. I decided to do it with a ballpoint pen. It was my first time sketching with a ballpoint pen. First, I remember I did the sketches in pencil and then I went over them with the pen. This pen I didn't like very much because you can see that it's smudged on some places, so it was hard to control, it was hard to do different levels of shadings with it. So I used it with this one too. I like the result a lot better because it didn't matter that much if it's smudged because I feel like with this drawing, that's a statue and it's okay if it looks a bit rougher, but I wanted this one to be more delicate and I feel like it was hard to achieve. Then I switched, I took another pencil and I liked it more. I felt like I could work on some gradients a lot better. This one is, well, the proportions, they're so messed up. But I tried. For this page, I decided to use my color pencils. This is kind of where I realized that my color pencils weren't that good. Um, I used my old colored pencils. That was before I bought my Prismacolor Premier pencils. Um, and it was kind of the first time that I used them to make a drawing. So I realized that they were really hard to work with, but still I had some fun. I used some acrylic paint to do the gold accents here. I think 
this is paint too but i'm not sure what did i use i don't remember but i think i did a video on it so you can go watch it on my channel for most of these pages i did some videos on how i made them not all of them but i'll put a card up, up top here or here so you can go watch them when we're done and i'll also put all of the video links in the description so if you want to go see how i did a specific page you will be able to find the links really easily okay so um, yeah i like this one and i really like this drawing but i feel like because my color pencils were hard to work with i had trouble doing like the contrast between the two guys um, i feel like this page could have been a lot better if i had better pencils um, but I would say that my favorite drawing is this one when I look back on it because I like how I did the lines in her shirt and I like how it's less rendered. I feel like, like it's very cute. Then I did this page, which is probably my least favorite page, at least so far. I really tried some new stuff for this one, so I'm happy with that. I remember I used some inks for this and... I didn't really know what the difference was at that time between the different types of inks. So for this one, I used normal inks, which reactivate when you put water on top. I had only used acrylic inks previously, so I didn't know the difference. When I tried to put water on this one, it kind of created a mess. Uh, so yeah, I, I then learned from it and created this one, which I like better, but still not the best drawing I did. And then I did this one, which is kind of a mix of the first style here with the hatching. And I also used the fluidity of the inks. Then though, I did this one. It's my one of my favorites, to be honest. I really loved doing the underwater uh, drawing, the underwater garment. I like adding the white um, highlights of the water and it was so much fun honestly I love doing this one then I did this one I used another type of paper I used the watercolor paper and I remember this one the goal was to only use three colors if I remember correctly I think the goal was to only use three colors to create all the different skin tones and well in fact everything in this image so that's what I did I remember that I had a lot of trouble with this one. Her skin tone isn't at all what it's supposed to be like. And looking back on them, I really liked them. I remember at this point, I was getting much better with drawing and with proportions. So that was a plus. Then I did this one. I think I used acrylics for these. Yes, and my goal was to use unusual colors and really give them like an alien look. And I think I was successful at that. Oh, I think also it's the first time that I used a background color to give a more cohesive look to the page. And that's something that I'm going to do later on as well. Then I did this page using watercolors or inks. I think I used, maybe I used inks. I don't think it's watercolors because you see how the color spread here. I don't think watercolors would have done that. But then again, I don't remember exactly, but I think I made a video on this one as well. I used some acrylic ink to do the flowers and the little um, grass things on top of this one. Then we are getting into a different style, something that you'll see more of. I don't know what happened with me, but I just starting drawing like this. I liked the um, hatching and cross hatching techniques that I was using. And I decided to just like push it to a hundred. <laughs> and I think I started with this one and I liked the result so much that I did a whole spread. I grouped together all the mean looking men statues. So that's what you see here. And you'll see that there is a lot more of mean dual statues. So you'll see more of that. Oh, this, this page. No, this is my least favorite page. It's kind of a page where I dumped all the portraits that were inspiring to me. Like, especially these. 
I tried to put as many portraits as I could in one page. I think I was starting to get fed up with this. I wanted to jump to the more inspiring portraits as quick as I could. So I just like dumped all of the uninspiring portraits here. But then I did this one. This one. Love, 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 love. This is the first time that I've used my alcohol markers. I think it's the only time I've used them as well. So I need to use them more. The only problem with these is that they go right through the page. So I think that's why I haven't used them more so far, but I will. I love them. I really love drawing with them. Because the markers stain the other page of the paper, I used a clever trick. <laughs> so I just drew a bunch of mean statues here on another paper and then I stuck it in my sketchbook. So I like it because I like to be able to unfold it as another layer to the sketchbook. And this one is very special as well because I used a red ballpoint pen, but this time I didn't sketch with a pencil. So I just started with the ballpoint pen, no pencil sketch. So at first it was intimidating because you can't really make mistakes because you can't fix them. But I found out that the way to do this is just start with a very light sketch. Just focus on the proportions first. And once you feel like you've nailed down the proportions, then you can go add some contrast, some more details, and then you can commit to the sketch. But this page, in fact, was the second page where I did this. But I'll show you the first one so you can see the very first drawing that I did using this technique, which um, I think shows that it was my first time doing this. I feel like I got the proportions right this time. The, my least favorite is this one. I feel like something's very weird with this area, but let's just ignore it. <laughs> See what I mean when I said that the, the alcohol markers stain? That's what happened. So you can't really do anything with this side of the page. Then I did this. I combined two techniques. I used a pen to do all the drawing like I would do with the mean looking dudes with a lot of lines, with hatching, cross hatching. But then I decided to use some gouache on top. The gouache was kind of an afterthought. I didn't plan this when I started this page, but I felt like it would bring a lot of cohesion to this page. I had done a gouache painting and I had some gouache left on my pen, on my mixing palette, I mean. So I used the, the gouache I had left to do these and I really like them. Oh, then I had some more statues. By this time, I was getting fed up with doing the statues. I really wanted to end this challenge. I wanted to do something else, something different. So I kind of decided to put as many statues as I could and on one page, I mean. I always try to put like portraits together. So in this one, at first I wanted to do all the ladies together, but then when I drew all the ladies, I had some spots left. So I was able to add in a couple more portraits. So this page looks fuller. And then I used my colored pencils, the ones that I don't like, and to fill this page to add some colors. And then I had some more statues, more, more, more. With these ones, I kind of ran out of ideas on how what I could do to make these special. And also I just wanted these to be done as quick as possible. So I just did them with pencil and then I called it a day. But I really like them. I feel like the proportions are very good, maybe except this one, but, and maybe this one, but I really like these bearded guys here and this one too. So I'm happy with them. Oh, and yes, this, this is the first time where I used a ballpoint pen directly on paper without doing any pencil sketch first. So this is the first one that I did. And that's where I learned that you really have to nail down your proportions first. So I think I didn't do that with this one and I committed to the drawing. And then afterwards I realized that my proportions were off, but I couldn't really do anything about that. So then I remember I did this one and I really made sure that my proportions were good before committing, and then I did the rest. So that's how I learned to do this technique, which at first I have to say was very scary. 
I really wasn't sure that I was able to do this. I was good enough. And after doing this one, I almost quit. But then I just did one more and then I did a bunch more. So I think you should really try it out if that's something you want to try to maybe get better or it's worth it. Now, let's move on to our second sketchbook. This is the Stratmore Mixed Media Sketchbook. It's smaller than my last one. All the portraits that I didn't want to paint, I did in my other sketchbook and I reserved all the portraits I wanted to paint for this one. So let me just zoom you in a little bit. All right. First of all, you might have seen this one. It's the first gouache portrait I ever did. I did this one when I received my Himimiya gouache palette and I did a video on it. I'm very proud of this video because I do a full review of this gouache palette. I do a light fastness test and I think it's very thorough. If you're interested in knowing more about this palette, what it looks like, how good the paint is, you can go watch this video. So yeah, this one took me so long to do because I really struggled with her skin color. And when I look at it, I still see that it's too blue and... But I struggled. You can see in the video that I did, I just... I struggled so much. Um, but I like doing the background and I think that's what I like also from gouache when moving forward. I like just doing shapes and not caring too much about blending things together. Because with gouache, you can't really blend. So that's why I tried to do with her skin. I wanted to do like a very beautiful blended skin, but it doesn't work that way. Then I did these two. This one I did using watercolors. I felt after the last one that I struggled with it so much that I just wanted to go back to the basics, to go back to something I know more, which is watercolors. But... I wanted to paint more loosely than usual. I wanted to stop rendering everything so much, especially the face and the eyes. And I was really inspired by Arlisha at Arlie Beans um, to work a bit more loose. And I think this is a start. Then I did this one, which is also a gouache painting. I decided that I had to try gouache again. I decided also after doing more research, that I would try mixing my colors less. Because I think that with the Himimiya gouache, it's not as good quality as other brands. You know, it's not a professional gouache set. So when you mix the colors, you can muddy them a bit more easily, I think. So this time I decided I would try to mix them less, as little as possible. I remember that this one took me way less time and I had fun. It kind of reconciled me with gouache. Then I did these two. I really like this spread. I like the both of them together because there's a cohesion in, in the colors and in the medium. So I used watercolors for the two of them. I did a video on this. I don't remember what the concept is for this one. I don't know if I use only three colors or not. I can't remember, but there's a video on it if you're interested. I remember doing this one though. What I wanted was to use watercolor for most of the portrait, but to use um, acrylics for the gold accents. And that was my first time, I think, mixing two paint types. So a lot of fun. These. Okay, so I feel like there's a cohesion in this spread as well because of the colors, but not because of the mediums. With these ones, I use my Prismacolor Premier pencils. So this was my first time using them. I had just received them. I had ordered them because I didn't like my other ones and I did a, a video on these. I explained a little bit the differences between my Prismacolor Premier pencils and the ones that I had before that and that I loved my Prismacolor Premier pencils so much. They were very fun to use. And also I think at the end I used some leftover paint to create this background here and then I had some fun with my pencils to draw on top of it. Then I did this painting which I love so much. I really like doing a monochromatic painting. I think I used two inks to create this one. 
two colors at least and I loved it so much. I used some uh, white acrylic ink on top to create just a little highlights here and there, but this one was so much fun. Then we are approaching the end. Here I did this drawing using my red Prismacolor pencil, which is something that I find I really like doing. I think my red is a lot shorter than my other colors now. I did the sketch. My goal was to add some color on top I hadn't decided which type of paint I would use, but I really wanted to add some paint on top. But then I liked this sketch so much that I just left it like that. And I like the fact that you can see like the orange from the other page go through the page and you can see a little bit of it here. And I think it adds like a bit of style to this drawing. So, oh, I, I think this page is one of my least favorite also, well, certainly from this sketchbook because I don't know, I feel like the composition is a bit weird. There's... I don't really like the clown thing. I don't know. I don't really like her costume. I don't... I had fun painting this one though, but I just like looking back on it, I don't really feel super inspired with this page. I wanted to do a big portrait for this one too, but then I really wanted to get to the end of this challenge. I think with this one, I only had three left. So I just draw, drew it on this page because there was a blank space here, first of all. So that was weird. And I feel like they have something in common. So they would fit well on this page together. And then these are our last two portraits. For the 100 head challenge, I think we are finishing with a bang here. But let's talk about this one first. This one, I used a red pencil, a Micron 0.2 red pencil, I think. Not sure. <laughs> because I found out that I really like sketching in red, but I only had um, black pens. So I decided to buy a red one to do my sketches. I tried it with this one. I liked it very much. And then I added some watercolors on top. And finally, our last one, my favorite ever. My favorite portraits I did for this whole challenge is our last one. So I think it finishes the challenge well. I'm very proud of this one. And this one, believe it or not, I did using gouache. So I think it's kind of... um. It's the last portrait, it's super nice, it's my favorite, and also it kind of reconciled me with gouache. I didn't fight with my gouache at all for this one, and I remembered that before painting this one I was feeling a bit low, and then after doing it I was just... It gave me my happiness back, I feel like. It gave me so much energy, and yeah, so this one is associated with a lot of positive emotions. So. I'm very happy to have finished this one. Let me just do like a flip, a flip, flippity flip, flip thing <laughs> to show you all the drawings I did in this one. And let's do one for our other sketchbook. These are all the portraits I did for the 100 head challenge. So now I don't know what will be next, but I just know that I'm super excited to be able to move on to other subjects. I really like doing landscapes, so maybe I'll do a bunch of landscapes, who knows? We are finally done. I don't regret this, even though I complained about this challenge for a <laughs> um, number of times. Um, but I feel like I learned a lot. I feel like my proportions got better, my drawing time got shorter. So I feel like I was able to achieve the result I wanted quicker, quicker. I feel like I was able to achieve the result I wanted in my sketches way quicker than when I first started this challenge. So there's that. If you're interested in doing this challenge, I would say go for it, but Maybe try doing it more quickly than I did or not. I don't know because I couldn't have done rendered portraits like this if I had tried to do it in 10 days. It would have been undoable at all. So my goal for me, as I said in the beginning, was to try different mediums and different techniques. But if I just did some sketches like this or just with pencil, I could have finished it maybe in two weeks or something like that. But that wasn't really what I was aiming for. So 
I say that practice is always good. Practice is, if you want to get better at portraits, definitely the key is practice, practice, practice. So whether it is doing a challenge like this or just finding your own references, I say that practice if you want to get better. So I'm glad to be able to finally show it to you, show you all the portraits that I did. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a like, please leave a comment and subscribe if you're not already subscribed to my channel. It would mean a lot to me. So since we said that, take care and I'll see you soon. Thank you.